Good evening. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful but very warm. And it's almost, what, 5 o'clock right now? Lauderdale-by-the-Sea, Florida. 90 degrees out there for my local peeps. I'm sure you're sitting inside like I am enjoying the view from the inside here. <laughs> All right, well, what else uh, is going on out there? Metals markets are crazy. Uh, so are uh, equities markets and all other markets out there. We're going to get into that in a moment. Meanwhile, let's take a look here and see what... Uh, <clears throat> all right, folks. Here's, uh, this is not what I had planned for you. The collapse. <laughs> however, on Friday... I've been using that word too much, however. On Friday... Uh, I think the topic of the video was about economic collapse and uh, has it started. Is this 2008, um, you know, the uh, part two, more or less? And it really is. This is uh, just a second phase of uh, 2008. And it kind of, it took me a little, I've been talking about it for two years now, that we, we've never really recovered from 2008. All we did was just band-aid the problem up. All we did was, it's a sinking ship like the Titanic. All we did was just uh, patch up the ship uh, with more, you know, more patches. Meanwhile, these patches are leaking and the more leaks are popping up everywhere. And that's what we've got going on right now. The, you know, the Fed and the government never fixed the problems in 2008. We had that overnight collapse, the collapse of Lehman Brothers, <clears throat> which a lot of us are starting to understand could have happened because of silver. Uh, but that's a whole different topic. And, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're taking a look at the uh, uh, stock market starting to collapse. It just couldn't uh, contain itself. It, w it was two things that were going to happen here. Uh, the Fed was just going to kind of endlessly continually print money and you know that's not going to happen because it, the Fed does have um, a survival you know a survival mode that they're in right now and it's either going to be the economy or us or the government or them and more than likely the Fed is not going to uh, 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 um, put themselves out of business by by continually keeping rates down like they were and the stock market was just flying higher and higher. They had to deal with inflationary uh, 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 issues here. Folks, it's no longer the problem with a pre-planned marketplace, and that's what you've got with the Fed going on right now, is planning. You've got central planning in the marketplace. The problem with that is it totally throws out the window uh, uh, the, <clears throat> the free marketplace. It really does. It throws out the window uh, that prices are made by uh, supply and demand. All right. When, when you have artificial m monies, obviously we've had it for quite some time, but uh, uh, not backed by anything that could just be printed. I mean, we had to expect all this uh, happening. And I think what a lot, a lot of people, including myself, kind of get confused with is we were perhaps looking for another 2008 style collapse. <clears throat> uh, and uh, uh, excuse me, let me take a quick sip here. Throat's a little dry today, but... Uh, uh, I think a lot of us were expecting a 2008 style collapse, which we haven't seen. We haven't seen that overnight collapse of the market. We haven't seen that 20 and 30 percent drawdown in real estate markets in such a short period of time. Uh, and the reason I don't think that we've seen that collapse happen again is not because they fixed anything, not because the problems are over with. In fact, quite the opposite in my opinion. They've made things worse. They've doubled down on their stupid. And uh, uh, things aren't any better. In fact, things are quite worse uh, to many degrees. So the collapse it, it really probably began before 2008. It's pretty obvious that it has. You know, historians, honest economic historians one day will, will, will note that the uh, 2000 collapse was inevitable. And it probably started when we came off the gold standard in the 1970s. And it probably started before that. It's just a long running thing that you know, we didn't see really blow up in our faces until 2008. Uh, and I think we're, we're seeing the same thing right now, except that the one thing that the government did learn <coughs> was not how to fix things. The Treasury has not learned how to fix things. Uh, it, as I've noticed, they, or as I've said, they just bandaged up the patient, the hemorrhaging patients. And the patient's still hemorrhaging, but just less because there's bandage. But meanwhile, the bleeding just never stopped. They never fixed the issue. They never fixed the holes in the ship. Uh, and they just kept uh, pumping out the water and <laughs> creating new money. And that could not end well. That does not end well. It will not end well. <clears throat> in fact, I believe, again, 2008 
which just could be the second or the third phase of the uh, economic collapse we're going to see because of a fiat-driven dollar and centrally driven uh, uh, central planning, uh, central economic planning. Uh, Greenspan once said that the uh, 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 running the Fed and, and figuring out interest rates was like driving a car with a rear view mirror. You, you could only use what you've seen in the past happen to you as a guideline to what you wanted to do in the future. And again, folks, this is not supply and demand driven. We are no longer in a supply and demand driven fiat world. We're no longer in a supply and demand driven commodities world, as obvious with the price of silver. It's <sighs> centrally planned and a lot of it's planned by crooks as well. The collapse has begun, folks. It began a while back ago. It's just not happening right now. You can say it began when Nixon took us off the gold standard. You can say it began in 1913 when the uh, Fed, took, uh, Fed took over. You can say it began in 2008. I mean, you know, pick your time frame. Again, I think that honest historians, economic historians one day, will be able to probably take the timeline back to the point of 1913 when we allowed central bankers to take over our economic system and our money. Uh, remember, the Constitution said that only Congress shall, uh, uh, you know, say what money is and isn't in it. And not what money is and isn't. Only Congress shall have the right to approve money uh, <clears throat> and create money. And that money shall be made out of gold and silver. I think that you could make the case that the uh, economic collapse of this country if you're looking at in a macro standpoint, happened when we got off the gold and silver standard and allowed the bankers to take over in 1913. It's been a slow downhill uh, ride to hell ever since. Uh, so when did the collapse begin? Yeah, you could say it began back then, but it, you know we live in such such short time spans. You know my time span is of a, of a middle-aged guy, and uh, my you know in I wasn't born in 1913. I wasn't you know born yesterday either. <laughs> So my view of the economic world is my sl thin slice of the uh, the good times and the bad times. And when were the good times? I think you could say post-war, uh, 1960s. Uh, well, 1950s, 1960s uh, weren't too bad. Well, again, my I didn't grow up in that time, so I really can't tell you. I wasn't a working person. I might have said it was prior to that. But uh, um, hmm, interesting, interesting thought here. I just kind of created for myself here. But we live in such, you know, uh, you know, again, middle-aged man, say you're 50 years old, uh, your, your time span is between, what, 1960 and uh, 2010, all right? That's what you recognize. So if you see an economic boom or collapse in between that time, that's what you're, you know, that's what you view everything as. So in our, in, in the time frame of a middle-aged person like myself, uh, you can say that uh, we've seen a couple of collapses in the economy. One would be the 1970s. Uh, it, it, Nixon took us off the gold standard. Uh, inflation shot up its ugly head. Interest rates were just insane. Uh, but we can't compare this to 1970. You know, in fact, the, the amount of insane money, money printing and the, in, the amount of insane spending that we're done has done nothing but increase. The, the, the idiots in Washington, D.C. and the Federal Reserve bankers have learned nothing nothing at all they just doubled down on their stupid decisions uh, so I think the collapse happened happened a long time ago boy I could just blathering on about that but take a look at this if you're if you know if your pension fund or your uh, uh, 401k is in the Dow Jones S&P NASDAQ and a lot of people uh, have their uh, funds in there a lot of people's retirement depend on this stuff take a look at this uh, the, uh, big shit today that's for damn sure uh, gold didn't do that great either uh, nor did silver but <clears throat> 1.9% uh, Dow Jones, two over 2% 2 in the S&P, 2.5% uh, in the NASDAQ. That's just a daily down. Uh, gold taking a little over a half a percent whack, uh, but uh, uh, and Bitcoin by 2%. We haven't been talking about Bitcoin very much. And that is the uh, today's market. I'm not quite sure about futures. We'll see in the futures markets open up here. Gold and silver markets are currently closed. I think we'll take a look at that. But folks, one thing I wanted to bring up here is... Uh, be, oh, besides the play, Mrs. Lincoln, uh, I mean, be, besides that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? That's kind of what I'm asking you right now. I'm telling you that the world's collapsing. We're having an economic collapse. But, folks, it's been happening for a long time. We just live in a slither of that uh, time frame. 
Uh, so relax, uh, uh, act accordingly, understand what's going on. The world's still going to survive uh, even after we're gone. It's just going to take a lot more dollars to do it if the dollar is still the, you know, the primary currency. And I think they're trying to push everyone into uh, digital assets where they can control society. But that's a story for a different day, and we've talked about that a dozen times in our videos. Uh, I wanted to look at this chart here. One of the uh, uh, narratives of the reason that gold and silver goes down that you'll hear from, uh, you know, Bloomberg's, or you'll hear from the talking heads on YouTube or the talk, some of the talking heads on YouTube and, and the talking heads on television, the economic, uh, so-called economic experts and the experts in gold. All right, you got my point. Is gold versus real yields, okay? And, and the reason some experts will say well gold is down right now because the dollar is just going upward and that uh, the the tre the 10 year treasury yield is increasing uh, and that would generally be true because why would you want to you know be in an asset that uh, <clears throat> doesn't pay a dividend or doesn't pay above what real yields are and currently the official data shows that gold versus real yields and I'm looking at this and correct me if I'm wrong but Apparently, it looks like real yields are getting up into almost paying a half a percent. Uh, uh, and gold price has declined while real yields have gone up. Uh, again, this chart is inverted right here. Uh, but, but here's the thing. I'm going to read this down here to you. And this is a, uh, what is this, a long-term trends chart. It says, interpretation from the chart. The chart above plots the price of one ounce gold in the inflation-adjusted 10-year treasury yield. The real interest rate is defined as the difference between the nominal interest rate and the expected or actual inflation rate. The real yield in the chart above is calculated by subtracting the 10-year expected inflation rate, which I think we can <clears throat> say that this is bullshit here and that the actual uh, official rates that they're showing that we, that treasuries are actually into a half a percent, almost a half a percent in a real return is total bullshit as well. Uh, but let's move on along from there. From the 10-year Treasury constant maturity rate, uh, according to Herb and Harvey, I like those guys, I'm just kidding. The correlation, Herb, really, uh, the correlation between real interest rates and the price of gold is point, uh, uh, minus point, uh, 0.82. In other words, when real yields go down, gold goes up, and that's typically true. If the if real yields were, were truly real yields, and they're not, folks, see, and, and then what am I saying here is that they use the official rates here for real yields and we obviously know that the government's CPI rate, what the government claims is the inflation rate, is far lower than what the actual inflation rate is. And the numbers that the officials are using to show that treasuries versus gold are paying, you know, or again not even versus gold, but that treasuries are actually paying a positive rate above, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 the inflation rate is bullshit because the data that's derived to make this chart right here to, to show that the 10-year treasury rate is into the positive is skewed. It's bullshit. It's, it's way, you know, again, inflation rate's much higher. And that would certainly put that positive yield right there into the negative territory without a doubt if they were to use the real rate, not the official rate. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going somewhere with this. This correlation explains why inflation is gold's best friend while rate hikes are its worst enemy. Uh, here's a possible explanation for this relationship. Rising interest rates also mean rising opportunity cost of holding gold. Gold neither pays a dividend nor interest. And of course, no one buys gold thinking that it pays a dividend or an interest. You buy gold for wealth preservation because it has a 5,000 year track record, but I digress. Uh, thus, it is relatively expensive to hold it in portfolio, portfolio when real interest rates are high. On the other hand, when real yields are negative, holders of cash and bond are losing wealth. In such a scenario, they are more prone to buy gold. And what we got going on here, folks, is the official rates uh, would, would lead you to believe that treasuries are paying a positive rate when indeed that is not true because the rates that they use to figure out inflation are totally bullshit and under, you know, way below what the actual inflation rate is. I think you got my point there. And all you got to do is take a look at I bring up this chart all the time, but really, if you want to feel good about being in gold and silver as a uh, preservation on, of wealth, then all you d need to look at is, obviously, you don't want to look at the stock and bond in the S&P market today. <laughs> uh, all you need to do is look at what the buying power of the dollar, not the dollar index, which is confusing to some people. Oh, look, the dollar's getting stronger. The dollar 
index and the strength of the dollar in the index it does not mean that that buys you more shit folks it doesn't mean that at all that's a misinterpretation that the average joe gets is that the dollar strength is good oh look the dollar's up the dxy is up that must mean that i'm buying more shit with my money no this is the real chart when it comes and this is the official chart here and i'm sure that this decline is even greater again remember the that they're using the official rate of inflation here uh, if they were using the actual rate of uh, inflation here, you'd probably see these even slide down further and more of a 45 degree angle downward. But <clears throat> your dollar strength does not indicate that your, pay, your, your dollar is buying more. Dollar strength does not indicate that uh, the dollar has any kind of uh, uh, extra buying power. It's worth more. It's increased your wealth in any way, shape, or form by holding it. It has not. The DXY, the dollar index, is simply based on how it performs against other currencies, a basket of currencies. We've talked about this many times. But again, it's confusing. You know, they'll, they'll go out there and they'll spin the dollar strength as well. Dollar strength is good. And, the, uh, uh, and again, the dollar strength is based on a, a basket of other turds, you know, other turd fiats. All right. And also the uh, uh, real yields for... Uh, 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 treasuries are up, you know, based on the official CPI data and the, maybe the PPI data, but which is bullshit because again, we know that data is skewed uh, uh, lower than it really should be. Uh, I'm beating a dead horse at this point. Where do we go with this? Well, we where I go with this, folks, is you know, the lower gold and silver prices that you're seeing right now are, are being hammered down on the news of rising interest rates, which is a narrative and a great excuse to explain away lower gold prices and lower silver prices, when in the fact that the uh, uh, higher treasury yields, which supposedly pay a higher yield, and the uh, uh, stronger dollar, the DXY, have nothing to do with the price of gold and silver right now being down. What has to do with the price of gold and silver being down right now? Corruption and manipulation in the crime XCME markets. Sick of talking about it, but the price discovery for gold and silver is not made because of inflation data. It's not be made because of the dollar index. Uh, it is made because of the price discovery is made in a crooked uh, uh, futures and uh, uh, futures market called uh, the COMEX markets, the GLOBEX markets, the overnight markets. We'll get to that in a moment. Not because of a stronger dollar, not because of a higher paying uh, yields in the bullshit treasury markets, which are really probably negative yields based on real CPI and PPI rates. Oh, and again, I repeated myself 10 times here. I just wanted to get the point across. And this is something we've talked about over and over for the last two years now. It's hard to talk about fresh stuff with gold and silver prices and keep it real. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to do here. Take a look at today's prices down, down, down. Let's do a coin flip and see what the coin thinks as far as I'm going to do a flip, not a spin. Oh, almost dropped it on the computer. And it's a heads. It shows that we're up tomorrow. I'd be surprised given the criminality in these markets right now. I think that they're driving the price of silver down. Here, here's my little conspiracy, and I've been right on my conspiracy so far. I've not been, you know, I really have when it comes to gold and silver. Uh, they weren't conspiracies. We, you know, it, it all turned out to be true what we said for years and years and years that J.P. Morgan and these other crooked banks are, are uh, manipulating the price of gold and silver in the paper markets and the COMEX markets, and it's all been proven true. But uh, this is a gift, folks. These lower prices is a gift. If they're going to criminally drive these prices down like they have been, artificially drive these prices down of gold, silver, and platinum. Take advantage of it. Buy the real shit. Leave them hanging with their paper crap. Uh, gold at 1737. Good opportunity to buy. And uh, I happen to know a close family of my member, a uh, close family member of mine, someone I love very much, just stepped in and bought gold themselves. Um, I try. I don't sell it to them. They just asked me and asked me and asked me. They said, "Is now the time?" That's now the time, and I couldn't say no. It's not. Again, buy these dips. I think it's a great opportunity. Could it dip lower? Sure it is. Sure. I mean, sure it is. Sure. <laughs> God, Freudian slip. Sure it could. All right. I wish I knew that. Sure it is. I'd do a short position myself and make myself a billion dollars. And silver popping up above that 19 mark kind of getting killed in the overnight markets. We'll take a look at that and platinum as well. Let's take a look at these 24 hour charts. Look, uh, Sunday night, this is when this market, look, look when the market gets hammered in the overnight markets. Who the frick trades gold in the overnight markets like this? Maybe in the London markets, but who trades gold and sells a shit ton of gold into, you know, paper gold into these markets? 
for any good reason. Why would you do that? You, you wouldn't, unless your intent was to drive these markets down so that the morning markets at COMEX would be driven down as well. But that didn't quite happen. But th these markets were spoofed downward overall. I think they've been spoofed in the overnight markets. You know, prove that, though. That's the point. Hard to do. And the government just barely made a case doing it recently. But I still believe it's still being done out there. These markets are still being spoofed downward. Gold and silver markets. Take a look at this. $19. Let's take a look at that overnight chart as well. Drifting down in the overnight markets. Who the hell sells large amounts of silver or any types of silver in the thinly traded overnight markets? With anything other than the intent to drive the market downward and that's exactly what they got going on here however it looks like there was a bid up and people were buying the new york comics markets uh overall but these markets folks oh gosh so crooked so crooked uh but again great opportunity for us to buy the dips uh, good article, by the way, that you don't have to pay for. Ted Butler put this out in his newsletter for August 18th for you folks that subscribe to Ted's great newsletter. Um, here's something you don't have to pay for. Just go to uh, silverseekers.com and, and type in the short position in SLV by Ted Butler. And uh, highly recommend you read this article here. Uh, Ted says that uh, he believes that the big decrease in the price of silver that we've seen in the last two weeks has not too much to do with the big short positions in silver um, <clears throat> uh, because, he, you know, the, 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 they're at their lowest uh, silver shorting positions yet in the COMEX markets. Ted was trying to look at a reason. The data did not suggest that this, this uh, uh, beat down this monkey hammering that we're seeing right now in the gold and silver markets has occurred in the Crimex markets as much, much as it has in the SLV market. He thinks that the uh, uh, SLV has this huge short position right now, and he's not saying BlackRock's doing it necessarily, uh, or its custodian JP Morgan. He's not saying that directly, but he is saying that the SLV probably needs to cover this huge short position they have. Very interesting stuff, folks. Uh, as you can see, I'm scrolling down here. This could take us a good uh, 20 minutes to read. So I'm going to leave this up to you as suggested reading, not homework, because who the hell likes homework? I never did. So suggested reading, read the short position in SLV. Again, it's a free sample of Ted's uh, weekly, uh, this right here, his weekly newsletter called uh, The Butler Research right here. So if you want to read his newest newsletter for free, there it is right there. Silver Seek put it out there, and it's called The Short Position in SLV by Ted Butler. Where do we go from here, folks? What are the best deals out there? Well, the best deals are still here in my store at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals uh, if you live in South Florida. And if you don't live in South Florida and you're going to spend more than or buy more than 100 ounces of gold and buy more than 2,500 ounces of silver, the best deals are at Concierge Bullion Services, which you can call us. I'll give you the phone number here in a little bit. At uh, Well, I'll give you the phone number here in a little bit. Best deals out there are still 100 ounce bars and silver. Um, next best deals would be kilos. The next best deals are going to be uh, uh, one ounce bars and 10 ounce bars. As you know, here at Commercial Rare Coins and uh, Concierge Bullion Services, we beat Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion. We also beat the other big online resellers. And yeah, the bigger they are, the better I can beat them. Uh, and the local South Florida folks here as well. So if you're looking to buy gold or silver uh, products uh, and platinum products, please check us out and uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with our prices and our service. Uh, as I said, the best deals out there are gold bars still, one ounce gold bars and cars, Valcombi, Swiss Credits, uh, any of the good brands out there I believe are, <clears throat> excuse me, let me grab my sheet here, which is right near my hand, uh, and turn the calculator on. In small quantities, you should be paying no more than 74 bucks over uh, per ounce for uh, gold bars and again I can beat that price even if you're buying larger quantities uh, what is the next best deal out there I'm gonna have to say Kruger is the best deal out there at 95 bucks over or less uh, buffaloes are another good not buffaloes not a good deal <laughs> buffaloes are the uh, at, and eagles the premiums have come down about 10 bucks here but they're still like a buck 50 over for eagles and gold buffaloes which isn't too bad but gold bars are still the best deal out there and when it comes to silver and let me type in silver. Silver bars. Best deal out there is still 100 ounce bars. At spot plus 290 or less, um, um, you can pick those up. 
and uh, 100 ounce bars, uh, yes, 100 ounce bars, spot plus 290 or less. Uh, one ounce bars, we have a ripping killer special on here in the store that I can beat the three big guys online on. So call us here at Commercial Wear Coins or Precious Metal or come in. Those should be no more than spot plus 365 at max until we run out. Uh, 10 ounce bars are getting a little harder to find, but I suspect they're at spot plus four bucks or less. Uh, as I said, we advertise to beat Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion on their 10 ounce bar prices as long as we have them in stock. Uh, Eagles are overpriced, folks. 90% is overpriced. Stay the hell away from those two products. In fact, if you got silver Eagles, trade them for kilos. You will put more silver in your pocket. It's a great freaking trade with no money out of your pocket that'll put more silver in your pocket as opposed to a higher, pre a higher price premium. Uh, great trade you can do out there right now, again, for silver Eagles trading for 100 ounce bars or kilos. Put more silver in your pocket, folks. Trust me, uh, the, the, the price that you're getting for silver, number one, don't buy silver eagles overpriced. Number two, uh, if you own a bunch of silver eagles, sell them, sell them, sell them, and replace it with bars. You can put more silver in your pocket, and trust me, you'll be happy you did. Read the comments uh, uh, below, hopefully in this video, of some of the, my people that have watched these videos and listened to me have done, and they'll tell you how well they've done by converting their silver eagles into uh, bars. Uh, as far as 90%, uh, <coughs> uh, same thing. Premiums on 90% are just crazy. Is, that, is this the big billionaire buyer out there still buying more silver, demanding 90% in silver eagles, which in my opinion is not the smartest way to buy silver. Someone buying that kind of quantity should be buying 1,000 ounce bars. That's what I would be recommending. Um, remember folks, you're not going to be bartering this stuff. So there's no reason to own 90% or one ounce silver eagles unless the price is attractive. And the price is not attractive. The price is attractive on hundreds and kilos right now, which again, I'll beat the pants off of anybody out there, especially if you're buying larger deals. <clears throat> and even if you're buying the smaller deals, I should, I'm not excluding the smaller guys too. Uh, I'm just trying to be more competitive and let you folks know that I do large deals here as well. Yesterday's video, no, not yesterday's, Friday's video was about the 2008 financial collapse. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Don't forget to hit that little bell, uh, which means, uh, well, I don't have a bell on here, but there's a bell that says, uh, uh, alert you, <laughs> I guess, when my videos come up. And uh, make sure you hit that like button, the subscribe button as well. Joey and everybody, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, commenting here. I'm going to kind of limit myself to a few questions. Uh, uh, my local coin store says, why should we bother with physical silver given all the BS with silver? That's because your local coin store is, you know, I don't know. They're entitled to their opinion. Uh, but uh, uh, given all the BS with silver, because, of course, the game is rigged. Every game is rigged, you know, even... Uh, uh, the stock market, you name it, it's all rigged, of course, you know, but if you don't play, you can't win. If you're going to play any rigged game, I'd rather play a game like Gold and Silver where there's a real product that's been around for 5,000 years and has a track record and I can keep it in my hand than any of the other games out there, and that includes equities, cryptos, and rare coins. <laughs> so I, I, I would have to disagree with your local coin person there. Meanwhile, keep buying from them if the prices are right, and... Um, uh, the low price of gold is going to strengthen the number of mines that produce metals. Yet yeah, that's absolutely true, true, Big J. And here's another thing people haven't thought about. Higher fuel costs are going to really whack uh, uh, cost, you know, the, the cost ratio, you know, the cost of running mines. A lot of fuel is used to run mines. And that's going to go up substantially. That's also going to uh, 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 take off, uh, uh, you know, or, or contribute to the increase in the price of gold and silver or the production of it at the very least. And let's keep moving along down here. And where are we going from here? Brian, do you think metal prices are being knocked down because the uh, BRICS nations are trying to create commodity standards as a currency? I think that's possible. You know, one of the reasons I think that uh, gold's being knocked down is because where gold goes, silver follows. And I still believe that they need to fill the silver position. So maybe knocking down gold in the Crimex markets is a good way to get the gold silver price to go down with it a little bit. But then I'm full of conspiracies tonight, folks. But <laughs> I've been right most of the time. Uh, the Empire striking back trying to do what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, that's possible. Uh, salute to you, Crypto. Uh, F, uh, crypto Fett, F-E-T-T. -T. Uh, Larry, let me on. <laughs> Donald. Uh, I always got a funny comment there. Far North Hobby, curious of your silver kilo bar prices. We're at like, for small quantities, I think we're, our price is like spot plus, uh, Three bucks on kilo bars, two ninety nine, three bucks, something like that. 
and uh, 677 each. I'm not quite sure what that is. Unfortunately, Chris, unless you're buying over, and I can beat that price for sure, if you're buying over 2,500 ounces of silver, uh, especially kilos, I could beat the crap out of that price. But unfortunately, unless you sim live in South Florida, I don't ship or anything like that. Hey, thanks for commenting far north. Appreciate that. And uh, a lot of you uh, uh, regulars out there, always nice to see you, Celtic Knot. Uh, Christine, take advantage of these prices for sure. And we live in strange times, that's for sure. Uh, I feel dirty. I have a pocket full of fiat turds. Hey, you got to you gotta own fiat turds. That's how we buy our shit. Even in the hyperinflationary times of the German mark, when it was it took a wheelbarrow marks, a uh, wheelbarrow full of marks to buy a loaf of bread, it was still, you know, it wasn't a pocket full of fiat turds. It was a wheelbarrow full of fiat turds. <laughs> However, gold and silver do hold their value. Hey, listen, folks, that's it. Thanks, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, uh, think for yourself. Always question authority, and as I said, if you don't live in South Florida, you can't come to our brick-and-mortar store, which is Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals, in beautiful Lauderdale-by-the-Sea. There's our outside right there. Um, uh, we're open 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays here. If you, ca if you don't live in South Florida and you're looking to spend more than a, uh, or buy more than 100 ounces of gold, more than 2,500 ounces of silver, uh, here's the way to uh, do business with us here. Uh, it's Concierge Bullion Services, and I'll give you the full number. Again, just type in ConcierbeBullion.com. Uh, it gives you a little uh, uh, details about uh, who we are and uh, who I am. And it talks about, uh, there's our minimums right there, 100 ounces of gold, 25. And again, we can do this by phone, not online, but we do this by phone with wires and confirmations and that kind of thing. We can be reached at 954-302-2046. Again, if you don't live in South Florida and you want to buy more than 2,500 ounces of uh, silver and 100 ounces of gold, uh, that's, the, that's the place to call us. And if you do live in South Florida and you're buying under those amounts, even those over those amounts, you can visit us at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Happy to help you out with it, whatever you need. Well, uh, boy, that's a long one. <laughs> Thanks for watching, folks. Oh, man, a heads up to all you Wall Street Silver folks. I watch out there every day, and I appreciate you watching my videos. And again, folks, I'm going to close it at that. Thanks for watching. Have yourself a good evening, and uh, let's see what happens tomorrow. Good night now.